publisher's the king. Oh, I'm just sitting here with your friend watching a little TV. <laughs> Bullseye. Hello, and thank you for coming along to the next video in my Inventor Tips and Tricks series. This isn't so much a tip or a trick, this is more of a little mini condensed training course, as condensed as I can possibly make it. Because I've had a couple of requests for this, for the, uh, it's all about, obviously, you've seen it on screen here, it's all to do with the not so new, but new to a lot of people, material library. Uh, and appearance libraries within Inventor. In Inventor 2013, Autodesk sort of rocked everyone's world uh, in, a, in a negative way and introduced this new uh, way of managing materials and appearances and it caused absolute havoc. It caused chaos when it was first introduced. And I want to, what I want to, I want to just defend Autodesk for a bit here because I've got it on good authority from someone very high up within the product development team within Autodesk, uh, who I'm not going to give his name out because somebody will figure out his email address from that and bombard him with their own personal problems. So, but, but having basically the inventor team, the development team were given very short notice, very, a very limited amount of time to implement this new material and appearance browser prior to the launch of Invent 2013. Someone, I guess quite high up in the corporate structure with an Autodesk said we want to make all of our Autodesk product portfolio, anything that uses materials uh, like Max, Showcase, etc. We want to have a uniformed interface between all of those products for managing and transferring materials and appearances. Kind of a, a good and in theory a, a best intention kind of idea but the Inventor team were given very limited time to implement that into 2013 before the launch and it just did not go very well. They did the best job they could, but it did not go very well. But over over time, they've ironed out most, if not all, of the problems with it. And what we're left with is still quite a clunky interface to navigate around, hence why I need to create a video like this. And hopefully it helps you if you're watching this. Uh, hopefully you're watching this because you do need a bit of help with it. So that's the background to why I've created this video. Uh, and in defense of Autodesk, just uh, I didn't want to make it sound like this is, uh, you know some sort of attack on, on their work in any way because it's not, I understand where they came from when they had to implement this. So uh, another precursor to this video, uh, whoever you are watching this video, I don't know where you stand currently with your materials and appearances. There could be many different people in many different scenarios. You might have an existing library from an old version of Inventor that you need to migrate. You might have already got a new library and you're not sure how to manage it. You might just need to know where to start from scratch. I can't unfortunately implement all of those different scenarios into one video it would take far too long so I'm gonna start from absolute scratch literally from scratch on a basic blank default platform and show you how to create a new library how to add materials into it and how it all works how you know what I think the, the most important part about this is how to get your head around it once you get your head around what the dialog boxes mean you can then kind of apply that to to wherever you are in your scenario in your situation so to literally start from scratch I'm gonna create a new project with an inventor uh, I'm gonna call this just some basically you know materials something like that and save it in the default workspace area where my project is doesn't really matter at all for the purposes of this little course what I'm also going to do is leave the file paths in the project directory all by default so for example template design data I'm going to leave them all default in your if you're doing this for a drone office the chances are all the best practice would be to put those locations like templates and design data put them on a network location or, or in a vault um, it's a different discussion for a different day but in a drone office when they basically when you've got more than one person that needs to work on this data set you need to have it uh, centralized so everyone can access it, not just you. Okay, so what the first thing we're going to do, what we need to do, is to create a new library. Now, the old Inventor libraries was all XML based, and it was all located within your design data folder. The materials were sort of bundled into this area. Now, in Inventor 2013, the material libraries changed from an XML format to this ADSK lib. You can see it just on that tooltip that's popped up there. The library file is an ADSK lib file. So we need, well, yeah, what the intention of this video is to create our own new ADSK lib library and add our own materials to it with the idea being that that's the library that we're going to use. Now, unfortunately, you can't create a new library from within this project's dialog box. We need to go into another environment to do that. But first thing to do is just to make a note of where your design data folder is. Because although it doesn't mix in with this 
design data folder anymore. We want to keep the library in the same place as this, as to not make. We don't want you know everything to be all over the place. We want to centralize things as best as possible. So whilst you've got this project dialog box open, just one left click this design data area, this design data file folder, and highlight all of that folder and just copy that to the clipboard. Now, obviously, I'm hoping that if this is you and your drone office, this is a network location, but we basically just know where your design data folder is. So I've copied that to the clipboard, save your project, and then done. And we're going to open up a new IPT file. Great. So now that we're in an IPT, we need to go into the material browser. So on the top quick access toolbar, you click this little speckly moon looking globe button here, and this launches the material browser. This is the dialog box that has got a lot of people confused. and. Yeah, I kind of get where you're coming from because I remember what it was like when I first looked at this and I was just like, Jesus Christ, what is this and why? But anyway, we'll not dwell on that too much. So the first thing we need to do is to create our own library. It will be our own personal custom library and it will start empty. To do that, at the very bottom left of this dialog box, you click this little folder with the spanner on it and then you create a new library. Now, if you've copied the path to the clipboard from the design data folder in the projects area, just paste that folder into here, and that should take you to the very top level of your, your company style library, and you should see all these folders. Now, we're going to put the custom library in the materials folder. It doesn't have to be in here, but it makes sense if it is, because that's where most people would look. You know, maybe you leave the company, and someone needs to kind of follow up and understand what you've done and where you put the material library. This should be the first place they'd look and then give your library a name so I'm gonna I don't know just make up a <laughs> come co, co library whatever just whatever your company name is and call that the library file so we're gonna end up with a file called kumquat co library dot adsk lib and then save that in there oh brilliant it's probably because I've already created one with that name and it doesn't want me to reuse the name so I'm just gonna call this kumquat library and that should be it Yep. All right. So once we've got the library created, you should see no materials in the library. But then, if you click one of the other, like these Autodesk Material Library and Inventor Material Library, these are Autodesk's kind of gift to you. The the standard libraries that you get out the box, which are fine to a certain degree, but they're not really. They they are professional, but you know you do want a bit of customization there, uppercase material names, that sort of stuff. So we need to. We need to move away from these and start using our own custom library. Okay, how do we get materials from one library into the other? Right, okay, well, there's a number of different ways you can do this. The, the, most, the most efficient way of doing it is to follow this workflow. Now, let's just use the scenario, uh, let's say we're going to create a new metal. We're going to create a new grade of stainless steel. So we're going to go into the Inventor Material Library, scroll down we we'll get the stainless steel and I just want to make another point about this dialog box right this area up here this blank area up here these are the materials that are currently stored within the part file that you have open in the background all right down below these are the materials in the library these are the materials in the document so at the moment we have no materials in our document other than one called generic which I guess it's just a basic default nothing material which has to exist to, so the part file can exist. So we're going to copy a material from the standard inventor library into the document library. So we're going to right click on stainless steel and then we're going to add it to the document materials. I'm not going to add it straight into our library and the reason for that will become apparent in a second. We're going to add it to the document materials. So that transfers the material from the library into our document materials. Now we can now use this stainless steel in the part file. It'll, be, it'll appear on the drop down list. However, it won't appear on any other part file and it won't appear on anybody else's computer because that material is just within this one part that we have open now in this session. Okay, so now that the document's in the material, we need to do a few changes to it, like rename it, change a few properties, maybe change the appearance of it, whatever you want to do to it. So we're going to right-click on that material, and then we're going to edit it. Now, the reason I didn't transfer the material straight into our library is we can do that, but you, for whatever reason, I don't know why, you can't edit a material directly in the library. It has to be in the document for you to edit the material. I, re I really don't have an answer as to why that's the case. Uh, I'm assuming it's due to read-write issues, perhaps somebody might be using the material, so if you edit it directly in the library it might cause problems, the material might be locked, I don't know, 
it doesn't really matter. So we're going to right-click on the material in the document and then edit it. And this brings up another very strange-looking dialog box, which I guess has a lot of people confused, and it's confused me because it hasn't bloody appeared. Right-click and edit. Oh, you come up the second time, will you? Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. So we get a we get this uh, material editor dialog box up here, and to be honest with you, the majority of these properties mean absolutely nothing. You, they literally mean absolutely nothing. Product information, cost, URL, keynote for all all of this stuff means jack all, absolutely nothing. You can't reference it into drawings. You can't reference them into Vault. They're just meaningless information, and I, I mean, you might be able to search on them, perhaps. I don't even know if you can do that, but you can type in them as much as you want. You can put as many keywords in as you want. It doesn't matter. You're wasting your time. The most important part is the name and the description, so people understand what material it is they're selecting. So let's just say we're going to create a material called, I don't know, make sure it's uppercase, because you know this can end up on a drawing, so you'd want that to be an uppercase, stainless steel, and let's just say grade A480. Copy that to the clipboard, so I'm not typing it over and over again, and then just put that into the description. And the rest of all this information, like I said, is completely irrelevant. Okay, so that's the identity of the material. Next thing we're going to jump to is the physical properties of the material. Okay, the physical properties might not look like mine look here. You might have different units. Depending on the, the area of the planet which you reside in, you might need to see different units in here. How do you change the units though? What if you don't recognize what the units are and you work in a different unit? Right, well you can't change the units from within this dialog box. This is part of the biggest, the overall kind of wide problem with the dialog of the, the whole material browser. It's not very intuitive. If you want to change these units, just to hit apply so we'll save what we've just done. Cancel out the dialog box, come into this folder again with the spanner, and then set the display units to be whatever you think they should be for you. Now, currently I'm working in metric CGS. You might work in English, you know, inches, pounds, mass, PSI. I don't know, but that's why you set your units. Okay, so we're just going to OK that and come back into this material, go back to the physical tab. For the name, I'm just going to paste in that name again. I'm not too sure why name has to be in here multiple times, but let's just. Uh, Let's just do it anyway. The description, again, just paste that in there. Keywords, again, this just starts to become all completely irrelevant stuff. And then, should this, you know, I don't know what you've copied and I don't know what you're creating, but if the, you know, the, the, the density, the density tends to be the most important property. That's what ultimately sets the mass of the model that you're creating. Um, if you're going to be doing FEA, then you might need to start changing, like, yield strength and and all the rest of those properties. But if you're quite happy enough with the properties, leave them as they are. If you want to change them, go ahead and change them. And then hit apply. Okay, for the appearance, this is where we set what the material looks like, what texture it gets. Now, uh, I'd love to go through how to you know, import your own textures from bitmaps and stuff like that. I'm going to leave that for another video because I would end up going off on a tangent, create another 10 minute segment, and most people may not want to do that. Um, with Inventor in this new material library, you do get a huge catalog of images to play around with. So you, you might find that most appearances that you need are in the standard library. And there's probably a lot more in there than you actually first realize. Um, but, you know, I, I will create another video. If, put a comment in the video if you do genuinely want to see a video just on importing your own custom textures, and I'll, uh, I'll, get, I'll get on that quick time. All right, so at the moment, we're just using a standard sort of silvery grey appearance, so we're going to change that. So down at the bottom, you want to click this open closes asset browser button here, and then navigate through the this basic, this is all the textures you've got to play with, there's hundreds of them. And there's even more than this, there's a whole load of textures which aren't even in this dialog box, which are kind of hidden away in your on your PC. Um, which again, that's a, that's a thing for another video. So this is the Autodesk appearance library. You don't want to be in the material libraries, you want to be in the appearance library. And let's just scroll down and choose something that's kind of metal looking, but not too sort of bizarre. Let's go for chrome just so we can see, like, you know, it's definitely going to change what we've done. So we'll realize and you know, recognize that something's actually happened. Let's go for chrome polished black and select that material by hitting this little left and right arrow here on the right hand side. And is that going to let us put it in there? Chrome polished black. 
place and everything. Yep, it's done it. Okay, it's just being it's being bizarre, doing strange things, but it's done it. Chrome polished black. Yep, blah, 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 blah. You know, the rest of these properties here, again, I could go, you could spend hours going through what all this means, but, you know, we don't really need to change them. Chrome is chrome. Hit apply, and then hit OK. Well, actually, don't hit OK because that grays out. Thanks, Autodesk, because that, uh, that's really consistent with the rest of your dialog boxes. And then click cancel. Right, so that's the material created and saved just in this document again important to realize and to understand at this point that material and that texture that we've changed and applied to the material is only in this part nobody else is going to see that just to confirm that I know I've said it but just to confirm it I'm going to create a new part file and I'm going to go to the materials and my stainless steel grade A480 is not selectable because like I said again and again and again but it's really important to understand that it is just in this part 11 which which I was making earlier on there it is there so it's just in this part right so how do we get that part uh, sorry how do we get that material into our library so that everyone can start using it well this is the easy bit right click on that material in the document add to your kumquat library that's it down here this is like a browser for all the libraries that you've got currently loaded into your project select the drop down arrow Select Kumquat Library, and you should see your stainless steel A480 uh, material will just add it into this library. And that's it done. Okay, let's test this. Let's shut down the part file. No, I don't want it to save it. Click New, New Brand New Part, and there it is, stainless steel A480. That's the only material selected because currently the Kumquat Library is the only one selected. If you want to then go and use a material from another library, like one of the standard ones, if you select Autodesk Library, you'll then get access to all the other materials without the uh, without the stainless steel A480 because that is in the Kumquat Library there. Right. So that's how you do it. If you want to start adding a, a library or adding more materials to that library, maybe you want to say, right, well, you know, I'm happy enough with having this customized stainless steel, but I also want to give all my staff access to all the other invented materials where you can just and, and not change them you can say well okay well we we'll use this grade of aluminium so we're going to add that to the kumquat library we can go down to you know copper copper's copper so let's add that to the kumquat library uh, you know so on and so forth uh, and then they'll appear in that kumquat library okay we'll shut that down we'll shut the part down we'll come into another new IPT just to confirm that everything's worked and there you go, Kumquat Library selected. So we've now got copper, the aluminium, and the stainless steel. Okay, how do you change the materials? Right, once you've added a material into your custom library, how do you change it? Well, like I said, you can't right click on a material and edit it directly in your material library. It's just not possible. So in order to change any of the properties in these custom materials, you've got to right click on it. You've got to then add it to the document materials. You've got to then go through the whole edit procedure change it all again change you know if you want to change the appearance you can do that if you want to change the physical properties you can do that once that's done you then right click you add to the kumquat library and then it'll overwrite the material that's in the library and update it with your changes so that's how you update a material that's in your library okay let's shut this down what's the next step well that's pretty much it if you only want your users to access your custom library what you would do is you'd go to your project file come to the material libraries and first things first, add your Kumquat library in here. So we're going to right click, add a library. Um, have I still got that path pasted? Nope. Brilliant. So I've got to go to, uh, not downloads, uh, it's in documents, isn't it? Documents, inventor, uh, materials. No, it's not. Ah, bloody hell. It's the design data path, isn't it? Yep. You've got to go to your design data path where you save the uh, material. ADSK lib file. So done there. Uh, this is the uh, this is the pain in the ass part about it all. Add a library, browse to the design data folder, materials, and then add the Kumquat library. Save that. Same again. It, well, mm, mm, we we didn't really create any custom appearances, so we don't really need to add it to the appearance library. But I suppose you can do. Just paste that into there. Go into materials, add the Kumquat library and then save that. So we're going to leave the Inventor Material Library as the default appearance library, but for Material Libraries we're going to right click on the Kumquat Library and then make that the active library. So every time someone starts a part or opens a part file, a legacy part file in Inventor, 
the kumquat library will always be the active material drop down list that they see if you don't want anybody to access any of the old material libraries you can remove them completely from the material library and then when they start working in inventor they'll only have the kumquat library and they'll only have the materials in that library oh right i'm gonna leave that there because i don't know how long i've been going on for but it's probably a bit too long already and i've only covered the very basics of the material library so in the comments if you need to see how to add your own textures into appearances i'm more than happy to do that um, i'm only going to do it though if enough people want to, to look at that and want to learn that because um you know it's a very niche area but that's how you create a material library how you add to it and how you change a material library don't forget make sure that material library is in your design data folder and that the design data folder is in a central location on the network because if it's in your my documents folder another person in your office isn't going to be able to see that design data folder so it needs to be stored somewhere on a network share on a map to drive somewhere okay thank you very much i hope that was helpful Sorry for going on a bit too much, but you know, it is a sort of a training course, so that's, uh, that's the nature of the beast. If you like the video, please press like. If you want to see more videos, please subscribe. And thank you again so much to everybody that's subscribed so far. Put some comments in the video, and until next time, thank you very much, and I will see you.